Definitely very excited to teach um, and to start this series on single, sanctified, and sent. Single, sanctified, and sent. And it gives me just so much joy to um, lead you into the word again in this season concerning how to think, how to posture, how to pray, how to prepare as far as your God-ordained marriage is concerned and what is ahead of you. And the assurance that I have in the Lord Jesus is that this series is going to open up a prophetic procession in the name of Jesus Christ and there will be many marriage miracles. That is what I'm releasing my faith for. One of our beloved brothers brought back a gift to us caught see the miracle of marriage do you want to rejoice and celebrate the newest couple can you rise so that we can love on you and celebrate you and let you know how special you are to us wow sis we've been waiting that just they come and there are many departments who, that are like just fighting for you choir is saying she belongs to us Ushering is saying we need a godly, gorgeous, married woman in ushering. Prayer is saying she's a woman of prayer. But wherever you go, here or there, you are going to be a great blessing to this house. We declare your marriage is blessed. We declare your family is an example. We declare the hand of the Lord be upon you both. We declare that you are prosperous and fruitful. We declare you are bound in the will of God. And you are an example of kingdom bliss on the earth. It is done according to the time of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Please rejoice again and celebrate God for them. Amen, amen. And thank you to everyone uh, who was, you know, part of the wedding, who supported, you know, interceded, gave. And uh, the wedding is over, but they're still receiving gifts. Am I correct? Am I speaking for you? Fantastic. So don't say, I, I forgot that time. <laughs> you can still do something. Um, and we thank God for everything he's doing with us as a house. Sister Blessing, are we good to go? Fantastic. So we have just a short um, assessment I want to run on you in the next maybe five to ten minutes and i just apologize if you find any typo by any chance because i it was just a, a fleeting thought that i laid hold on and i was asking myself in counseling uh, people you know in their single season and then observing how people transition from being single into being married as saints who do it god's way what are the sort of considerations in term in terms of how you prepare how you get ready how you posture so that you are able to receive what god has for you and so i i wrote out um, about 15 things, but that's typical of me. Everything gets a bit academic and all that. So I said, no, let's just stop at 10. I tried five. It seemed so short. So I said, we'll do 10, right? So I have this 10 matrix that just off the top of my head as a believer counseling a lot of single persons and being single myself, thinking about some of the preparations that you should actively be making. And again, we will circle into them in the course of the series but we wanted to take a honest assessment. It is anonymous. We don't see who, who filled what, and there's no reason to like uh, form. It's, it's your assessment. I want you to select your top five of the matrix that feels to you like the areas where you are excelling the most out of this um, 10 matrix for readiness for how a single begins to really prepare for their marriage miracle. So you go over there. Married people, please don't feel it. Don't distort our, our analysis. Please don't feel it. But you can hold, yes, thank you. But you can hold the quiz and share it. If you're online, it's bit.ly uh, slash triangle singles poll. Triangle singles poll. Triangle singles poll. So it's uh, S after the single. Triangles, uh, apologies. All is well. Triangle singles poll. If you're single, click, and we've got it on the church group, I believe, by now. Yes. So you can click on that quickly. Go over. Even if you're going to be married tomorrow, please feel it. Because I know there is one kind of ego that people in courtship have. They're just like, well, God has said so my case. 
you please go ahead and fill it. And let's see what you come up with on that side, okay? So we'll do this in the next three minutes, uh, 11 seconds. I will see where we are by then. If you are home, if you're watching from anywhere, I love to ask that you please join us and fill the poll as well. Let me go over on my side and see how it is looking. Okay, that's how it's looking over there right now. Let me refresh on my side. We have six voters so far, six voters. Um, and I'm looking at the scores that are coming up the highest. We've got spiritual maturity, confident esteem, emotional healing as of right now. But give me more responses. There are obviously more than four singles in the room, so I'm waiting for you. If you feel, please, can I just see your hands? You filled. Good job. Good job. What am I saying for? Sorry. I'm sure it's growing. Maybe because I'm not single, but I don't understand the context. Okay. You'd like me to share more context for the assessment? Yes. What's it about? Like, oh, okay. Do you so, think the one that Okay, sir. I'm just um, asking. Thank so, you. singles preparation assessment. Now, nothing deeply scientific, but this 10 matrix rang very strongly in my mind in terms of how a single person sort of needs to be getting better and preparing themselves to be properly postured for marriage. Did you get that? Did you get that earlier? Okay. And then, what I want you to rate at this time are your top five as you look at all and you're saying, where am I at my strongest currently? Give me your top five. Tick between one and five. Don't exceed five. Except if you feel like, look, I got this thing under lock and key. Every one of them, I feel like I'm doing super well. But if not, I want you to select your top five, your best five of, of the matrix and say, these are the areas where I feel I'm the strongest currently. PDK, does that help, sir? Does it offer more clarity? So tick where you are strongest. Tick where you are strongest. Top five where you, are, where you feel strongest. Okay, let me see what we have in total. Right now we have 21 voters. Okay, not bad at all. 21 voters. I'll give you 24, uh, 23 more seconds and we'll just close out and move from there. Thank you so much for just uh, helping give some context to where we might be. Um, as a people. And this is not what I'm going to be particularly teaching you um, in, in that broader sense or in more specific sense in this series. Um, but we will definitely find ourselves highlighting some of this, um, some of this matrix or qualities. Okay, we now have 27 voters and we will stop at this time. So what it looks like summarily, first of all, before we look at the results, as you went through it, particularly as a single person or even a married person, did it bear any measure of resonance with you? Did you feel like, oh, okay, this, this seems like an important thing. 
I have been paying attention to or I should be paying attention to. I want to hear from a few singles. So if you felt like, okay, I've been paying attention to these things. Can I see your hands? And you felt like, okay, that's good. I'm, I'm paying attention to the right things. And then if you felt like, wow, okay, I wasn't looking at it that way. Can I see your hands? Okay, thank you. Good job. Married people who looked at it, is there anyone bearing a witness saying that this, this mattered and helped me um, as I prepared for marriage and is still important even as a married person? How many married people feel that way? I feel that way. Like even in marriage, these things still count. Okay. So yeah, what we have summarily right here is number one, rating at the highest is spiritual maturity. Yeah, of course. What will you say is happening if, if you're not growing? With, I'm thankful about that, that you're growing spiritually. Beautiful. So you're saying that, look, I feel like I'm growing my walk with the Holy Spirit in a way that helps me make godly decisions and perceive what God is doing in my life as well as submit to his will. The second interesting and exciting is character development. Wow. So a number of us are saying, I feel like I'm also really rating high with the commitments that I'm making to work out careful adjustments in, in the areas of my weaknesses, excesses, and personality flaws based on feedback and God's word. That's so good. Number three, a number of our singles are saying, I'm strong on learning quest as well. I'm seeking out and submitting to mentorship and resources that can help me become better as I prepare for courtship and or for marriage. Okay, number four. I thought this was going to be higher. Number four, our singles are saying relational competence. I'm doing good in my interest in as well as capacity to enjoy friendships, build meaningful connections, and relate with other people well. Is that true? Is it women uh, or sisters that feel this more brothers? It will be the sisters. Do single brothers relate well enough in TBC? Confession time, do they? No, it can't be a brother that will answer now. They're always going to the back. Just with other men. Okay. Do single sisters relate well? Do they have the body language like he who will be friendly, he who will have friends will show himself friendly. Do single sisters in TBC have the body language of, hey, why not? Okay. <laughs> okay. To be honest, I want to agree with the, I want to agree with the brothers. To be honest, for real, typical after service. This is where it happens. This corner, this is Amanda's corner. They'll be there tapping themselves. <laughs> this is what I see. This is why I don't see a brother and a sister just saying, "Oh, wow, consulting as well as fantastic." These are the things I'm working on because from there, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh, I don't see a lot of that, and I don't see. Brothers, I have, I have a controversy against you. I don't know who you are asking, but I don't see brothers asking me that. What are your thoughts about Sister Tokwe? Well, yeah, these are things that I remember clearly used to happen in youth-led churches and fellowships. Because the moment you're picking, staring, or just like in the person, you're wondering, mm, okay, you're observing the person. Sisters, be honest, are there brothers who ask you about your friends in TBC? Hmm. People are coding. I can't. Don't worry. People are answering me with their eyes like, just low tone, low tone. <laughs> don't bring it out, boy. No. <laughs> okay, on soft pedal. We should keep it on the soft. Okay. I've been answered. Okay. Um, then we've got here the fourth thing. I hope I'm correct. One, two, three, four. The fourth on the rank is social grace. And that really encourages me. I'm really happy to hear that. Because I can tell you by experience, no kidding, interacting with single people, particularly even single brothers, who were almost turned back, or in some cases completely turned back from gravitating toward a sister or gravitating toward a brother, as the case uh, could have been in, in, yeah, because of social graces. Someone, two people were joking, and a brother beat a sister, like, not B E. Um, a T B I T. Is that the spelling of bit to bite? The, 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 I E O G J because I'm not able to explain better. I'm not kidding. <laughs> What's going on? What's 
going on? Or people that have bad breath and they're the one that argue the most. That no Chelsea, when we talk about Chelsea, spitting all over your face, and you're just like, God, why? <laughs> don't don't make don't make a sister or a brother struggle with consecration when God says you are the one. Make it, you know, do you see what I mean there? Don't let them spend three years crying and saying, why me, why me? Whereas it's just the issue of the external, you know, packaging. So I'm happy to hear the social grace, graceful courage in the way you dress, smell, speak, conduct yourself, the practice of etiquette in social context. Okay, really good. The final one here, and I'm excited about it as well, is confident esteem. Actively, um, great ability to show up as your own person. Am I correct about it? Oh, it has shifted. Oh, apologies. I have to refresh mine. Okay, spiritual maturity, character development. Oh, Catalyst Community now comes above confident esteem. Catalyst Community, actively plugging into a spiritually balanced, youthful, and inspiring community where your gifts are utilized and your alliances are formed. Okay, please celebrate yourselves. I'm proud of you um, for just, you know, taking the assessment. Do we, want to, do we want to hear from a brother and a sister? What, what does this assessment say to you? What does it mean for you personally? Whether looking at the general um, report or just thinking about you, where you are and what you feel. Who wants to share? Anyone? Okay, Satokwe will go. Uh, please, let's get the mic to her. Sister Satokwe is speaking. Brothers, get ready. And let's see who will uh, go for you. Okay, I think one thing that struck me was family part patterns. Because mm. in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that. But I'm not really intentionally so paying good. attention to say, okay, I'm not going to do this. How will I not do so this? Good. So in my mind, I'm like, I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to do that. In my mind, but I'm not really intentionally paying attention to how not to do it. So when I saw it, something just came to my mind that, Mm, how do you change this? So it's not about not wanting to not repeat a pattern. Mm. It's about how not to. I think that's where the solution is. Brilliant. I love that that came to your mind because it's a big blind spot for singing. Do you want to celebrate her? That's, that's a real blessing. So who wants to share for the brothers? One brother who's happy to share. What struck you? What stood out for you? Bro, hey, why? It's been such a long time. And I'm so excited to see you. It's good to be back. Yes! Answer the questions. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I thought that was a welcome. It were, use it to help me answer. <laughs> okay, honestly, I just saw the link this evening, so I've not really... That's good. That's actually great, if that's where it is. Yeah, so, but um, honestly, um, I think the Catalyst community mm. and uh, maybe um, a bit of uh, the number two, confident esteem. esteem. Yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, I, like, um, I think I was discussing with Reverend Kay and some other guy that were around this evening that uh, that's one of the things that is really very that used to be, you know, sort of a strength, a backup for growing Christian in those days. Yes. You know, you have this network of people you can share your faith with. Well, these days, but it seems to be coming back, you know. Like maybe three years ago, uh, we used to be kind of, we have this, um, this group of Christian like three, four years back that we're not very confident to say we are Christian. Mm. But that, com that, um, that is coming back now. So you see a lot of vibrant, more young people that want to connect. That you are also, you look at them, if you judge them by the way they look, you may miss out on mm. what is there. But when you connect and you hear the kind of thing they are saying, so you want to say, wow. So you are impressed. So this community... Is, is rising, is yes. forming in churches, in communities, yes. and all that. So for me, it's one of the things that I'm really very excited about. And so good. Yeah. 
I love it. Very, very good. Please let's celebrate Brother AY. Just so true. And, uh, you know, like he said, I, I remember that maybe about two, no, it will be longer than that, maybe about four years ago, I genuinely also started to worry a bit about the constitutions of saints and how they were meeting and hanging out. And it just seemed like after church, people just leave to their own lives and, you know, their own different communities that may not necessarily be fellowship of saints, right? And you sort of wonder if you, you, uh, saints are aware of the impact of the influence that their communities have on them. But I feel like, like he said, we, we're seeing a lot more of that coming back even within coaching, training, corporate training settings, people are still routing back to their faith as an anchor and connecting um, on those levels. So it's a joy to see. Star Yai, you'd like to share. Okay. Let's hear from you in one minute. Let's see what you can do. Okay, so I think that um, going through these things is just showing me like, maybe some areas I didn't know that, okay, these things are very important yeah. as preparation for you as a single person. Another thing that spoke to me here is um, character development. So growing up, I think I was someone that had this, um, some certain issues I needed to deal with. And sometimes you may want to think like, oh, it's because I have a strong personality. No, it's not because of that. So God started to speak to me and say, okay, so if you want to get married and you're saying, I, this is the person I want to marry, I want this, I want that, I use someone that... Um, Sorry, how should I put it? Like, I'm like, okay, God, I want to marry this person. What about you? What about your own qualities? So God started to speak to me about certain areas I need to work, with, work on. That like, yes, you have a strong personality, but some things need to die. Praise the Lord. I love that second one. Can we celebrate her? I love it so much. Really, really good. The way that I say it is don't forget that uh, the, the man of God, God is preparing for you or I used to say to ladies, it's also God's son. Do you see? So God doesn't want to do a disservice to his son, you know, bring him with someone who is going to uh, frustrate the ability to fulfill destiny. And it's a beautiful balance that on both sides, we have to be prepared to be a blessing um, to the person that we're going to be joined with by the grace of God. And you are a blessing. You're a great blessing in the name of Jesus so in the course of this series, what the Lord has put in my heart is to highlight some parables of the Lord Jesus Christ and to show you what it might say and what it might mean for where you are as a single person. The reason the, par uh, the parables are powerful is because the parables of Jesus are the paradigms of the kingdom. The parables of Jesus are the paradigms of the kingdom. And the paradigms of the kingdom are reflective of the civilizations of the kingdom. They are reflective of the kingdom's uh, code of conduct, reflective of the kingdom's possibilities, reflective of God's government and of God's value system. Amen. And so when we latch onto the thinking of the Lord Jesus Christ, what begins to happen in our lives is we start to shift to experience the transformations that come when we have Jesus in our lives, right? One of the greatest confusion that saints, I would need uh, to be back on the timer, thank you. One of the greatest confusions that saints sometimes create in the system or in society is when they have a vibrant passion for God, but their relationship with God is not reflective in how they live their lives. Have you seen that kind of thing before? Prayer meetings, they're there. Vigil, they're there. They don't wear earrings. They keep their natural hair. They don't wear trousers, right? And this is no criticism against any, any denomination at all, right? But you could then find, and that used to be such an annoying thing that you would hear people talk about, particularly when I was on campus. They'll be like, how can you look so spiritual but you're not bearing the fruits of the spiritual life. And you don't have to think too far. You can look at your life. I can look at mine, and you find areas of deviation. Is that correct? Areas where you're now saying, I need to submit more to the leadership of the Holy Spirit in this area. And what we start to see, which might be one of your most defining revelations concerning the supernatural life, is that Jesus cannot reach and change you beyond how we can reach and change your mindset. 
right? If the kingdom of God is going to come to you, the paradigms, the thinking, the ideology of the kingdom must come to you. And you remember this thing that PDK has said a few times about um, how the greatest revelation of, or the greatest miracle that can happen to a man, the greatest manifestation of the move of the spirit to a man is what? The thoughts of God entering the mind of a man or the thoughts of a man, right? And I won't even bother going on and on about it because I, te- I, I believe that I have shared about this a lot um, in, in the house, how the thinking of the kingdom is what causes us to experience uh, transformation in the kingdom. And until you experience transformation in the kingdom, you can't become a son. Until you become a son, you can't access the inheritance reserved for sons. Hallelujah. So you can find a person saying, why would this even happen? I mean, they, give, they, they pay their tithes, they are leaders in church. How will they have a broken marriage? They can have a broken marriage. Because if that marriage is not run by the ideologies of the kingdom, even though they love God and God loves him, they will block off interventions of God's of God's realm into their realm. Do you understand this? It's so serious. And that's how you could find some people who don't look that spiritual, but they are accessing the privileges of the kingdom and the possibilities of the kingdom because they are thinking like God. It's powerful. And that's why the Lord has said, go to the parables And we will trust him over the next two to three months to highlight in our hearts and as we gather around the light, some of these very defining thoughts, ideologies, belief systems, and a lens with which we start to view the world that will accelerate your marriage miracle. Hallelujah. God will not bypass stinking thinking because you are 36 and your mother is waiting to carry her grandchildren. He won't. And you don't sow seeds for that. When you sow seeds and you pray and you prophesy, what happens is the realm of the spirit begins to create around you an atmosphere that can activate your miracle. But you are still going to be just a thought a perception away from entering into that miracle. Do you understand this? I'm going to give you an example. You begin to pray. My wife is around me. I discern her. If she's in my circle of friends, she emerges distinctly in my heart. She's a glorious woman, a gift to me, a mother to her children, a partner in destiny. She helps me. She's a sufficient, proficient, efficient helper, anointed by the living God to walk with me into the manifestation of my divine destiny. By the way, if a man is not praying like that, I don't know what he's doing. Anyway, he's declaring. He even maybe meets uh, someone. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just focus. Don't mind these people at the back. They, are, they go to Dubai a lot. Just focus. So, in fact, a pastor comes to his church and testifies about next month is my 39th wedding anniversary. This woman has been the greatest addition after the Lord Jesus Christ in my life. No stress, it's been peaceful, la la la, you know all those lines. 39 years, never an argument. And you are just there like, my God, my God. You are so scared and you believe by the spirit that I should plug into this. It's a heritage. And honor is a language, it's a communication, it's a communication a tool. And you say, let me just liquidate some faith this morning. Huh? So you rush downstairs to the ATM, coach Embra got about 20. Boom. You put in a white envelope, you are feeling like a man of destiny. Bulky envelope, you walk with a posture. You know that posture. <laughs> and you, you talk to protocol, then they allow you. You know that is God. Because it's not every time. <laughs> so they allow you. Okay, no problem. Daddy says you can come. Then you enter. First of all, prostrate. He said, Rise, rise, daddy. I was so moved today. You know, I've been trusting God concerning my marriage. I can sense it as my season. I can sense it as my season. And I've just been praying. And when I was coming to church today, I perceived by the spirit that there was something that would be activated. 
you know, he, he says, he didn't let you finish. He just put his hand on you. Move into your marital destiny. If I be a prophet of the living God, the moment you hear that line, you know it is done. So you, thank you daddy, then you give him the seed. Then he calls you again when he, ah, ah. come here, come here. I declare, according to the time of life, it will not be long. The says the Lord, it will not be. Oh, shut up. That's a wise woman because a prophet's joke is a prophetic joke. Anything can happen from that moment. Now, none of this thing is a joke. I'm, I'm trying to pull you in into my storytelling. It's not a joke. The whole story of my life is plotted on the graph of prophetic pushes. So, as we are doing, hey, just know that it's serious matter. Right? So that has happened. There is now a move of God. Literally a cloud of God's move. A portal is opened over you. You are now a mobile miracle. A magnet for the ordained one. So the spirit of God within you, whom you've been responding to, right? Moves you. You, you just saw an event. You really didn't have a... If that, you didn't feel like you wanted to go, but you woke up after praying and it came alive that you should be there. Boom. You get into the car. You drive there. You arrive. You wanted to go to see this where an usher was just... You are like, all these stubborn ushers. I want to sit at the back so I can leave on time. But they lead you to this place. You sit. Begin to experience Jesus. The worship is fantastic. A sister comes. She's seated by your side. Eluda Bahasa. Vezo Shoto Bariande. But you have unresolved, paradigmic distortions. You have belief systems that have not been immersed in the blood of Jesus. You have subconscious conditioning and negative associations concerning tribes, heights, complexions. You have unhealed hurts from unspoken rejections because the white you were forming big boy with muscular chest, but you were hurting. So all of this is inside, covered nicely behind fine beards and sophisticated tongues. And then as you look at her, from that lens of your distortions, she can never be the one. You know, I shared this thing a long time ago, and I don't know if you remember it, but it's serious. That when the reason a belief system is called a stronghold, scripturally, is because it can fence you off revelation knowledge. This is serious. That a belief system can be so entrenched that it is impossible for you to actually see or hear. We have light in Jesus' name. So you see, the reason we study the word is not because we want to have rev or because we want to go and preach or because pastor says open to Luke 3. The reason we stay with the word again and again is because the word has a cleansing power. The word has a cleansing power. You don't even know specifically what it is tackling today. But the word, the word of God in meditative form, as the spirit of God broods over it, is breaking down walls. Breaking down walls. So you go weeks without, without the word, but you don't feel bad. Why? Because you are still experiencing the present ministry of the Holy Spirit. Anyone ever been there? Ah, or they quite dangerous. Meaning you are not sitting with the word with your journal. Good number of our investment. Systematically layering precept upon precept, line upon line. The mystery of the word. Taking notes, cross-referencing. Getting excited, standing up saying glory to God. Wow, okay now. Mm. You're not doing that. But randomly the lord is still putting people in your heart you call them and you say i sense this they say jesus exactly you feel good you're like what are you doing bad you're doing bad very bad because your relationship with the word of god is not meant to be a bridge for spiritual performance it's not so you can preach a good message your relationship with the word of God is to make you into who you already are, but you have not manifested. It's not a joke. 
your growth, your transformation, your repentance is in the word. You know, we've talked about that as well. How repent is the most theologically misrepresented word in the Bible. Repent is not torn from your wicked ways. It's bigger than that. Repent is metanoia. A radical departure from an existing pattern of thinking. Because until you radically depart and change the way you think, you really can't change the way you are and the way you act. Right? So his distortions, she's short. She's not a babe. Human hair missing. Bone straight missing. Dimple absent. The kind of fragrance that will call a man and say, here I am, send me. It's not there. Oh, you think men of God don't have it? They have it. They have it. It's filed away. They want uh, worship like Sinash. Gift of the spirit like Catherine Coleman. A body like Beyonce. The sisters, they want spirit like Apostle Joshua Selman body like Denzel Washington. So when they see that leg, leg brothers is doing embedded in it. Same brown trouser. You know it is the same because the line, there's a line, you know the place. You're like, yeah, yeah, but mm, mm. The, the spirit within you, that regenerated one that is alive to God, will be burning. Ah. Ooh, you will talk to him after a few Sunday services. That was such a great time. You can see the humility, the anointing. He, because he's not even feeding well. So, Kuku fasting, he's fasting. <laughs> you can see all of that. But you, that's your distortion that you've not submitted to Jesus. And it is not under the radar of the word. Because the word of God dematerializes nonsense. That this thing can stay. You won't even know it is happening until it is tested. One day, someone is just speaking around you and everything rises against it. Nope, that's not that. No, no, not at all. That's not how. Or people are respecting people because of what they have, but your spirit is so alive. You can see an occultic flu and you step away. You are moved. The word is working something in you. The, the flow of the spirit fully becomes dynamic in your life. To the degree of the invasion of the word of God. So I, as it's just vibrating, that could be, you, you have gone. Sisters and brothers, missing cycles. Going in cycles. Missing seasons because of distortions in the mind. Idols. Reinforcements of the flesh. Preferences after the order of the old man. Untamed appetites of the flesh. And that's why he said going to the parables. That was meant to be by the way of an introduction. Um, so the parables are the paradigms of the kingdom. There are many single people who don't have to pray one more prayer. One more line. You don't have to, you don't have to write one more code of prophetic programming. You don't have to pray one more prayer concerning your marriage. You just have to partner with God to allow the undressing, the undressing. I've just told you how when, when, I, when the Lord started to say to me, it's time to be married. So, um, you know, I, I believe the Lord said to me to write what I saw, what I perceived, what I, what I envisioned concerning who he was bringing to me. If you see my list, spiritual list, a holy list, a noble list, and I was done, the Lord said, you are in error. I, I, I'm not asking for jibbo. I just say, I want us to be touring the world, doing missions, co-evangelist, co-authoring books, I can see us at book signing events for the sake of the kingdom. <laughs> Is that not a very spiritual, right? I was so tilted toward ministry that 
Honestly, I could not see anybody who was not already on posters manning a, a global walk for that court, Omnicha, Abuja, UAE, just doing the will of God. Where the day is going to introduce me, massive assembly, you just meet my woman of God. Then I will rise and wave. <laughs> Shut up, Barosa. And the Lord said, I thought you are ready. You are still not ready. Don't worry. Let's go back to the wine press. The nonsense is not yet done. I'm like, no. I remember telling Pastor Dr. Ari Fallo, that's why you also need leaders, mentors. I gave her the full gist. She said, don't worry. We will fast track your process. We will not, because this thing you are doing is, it can take you back in. She said, we will fast track the process. There are ideologies that must be pulled down. I said, this ministry thing is an idol. She said, go back and let God show you why it's an idol. And the answer he gave me, I can never forget. He said, true ministry is walking with God before working for God. Ah. He said, so the one I am bringing to you is a dearly beloved son who is walking with me. Okay. Honestly, I needed that memo. Because when I met PDK, I'm not talking about his spirituality, he was deeply spiritual, but it, it was too fine, it was a distraction. He was wearing fitted t shirts. That's my first major memory. What fitted t shirt like this? I'm like, ah, see all the kilo shell, they don't distract me. Because you get, it's still that paradigm suit. They, he's wearing fitted t shirt and jeans. Ah, I was like, are you walking with God like this? Because you are too fine. This one is a guy, man, no. It's so pale. So you see why he needed to, first of all, debunk religion. You know, religion is a type of witchcraft. Oh, are you aware? And it's, it's tougher for saints to catch it. Because it's all looking like God. But it's not. Tomorrow, we're going to be 10 years. Ha! Ah. Hmm. It just had to be the guy. He had to be this guy. Ah. You have to be led. And to be led, you must let the Lord do a work in your heart. So that you can rise above your preconditionings. He must do that work. And it's not a, it's not a crusade intervention. Today, he dies. He dies. He didn't used to die. It's in the way we, we must make this practice of daily decrease. You see, God is not in a hurry. Because he knows where he's taking you. And he knows what he can make of your life if you follow him. This daily decrease, the type that causes you to look back, and you, you now understand when he says it's the path of the just. It shines brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Meaning that as our intervention, interaction with the light grows, we shine brighter. It's not the light per se, that is shining brighter. It's a path. Because as we behold him. As in a mirror. We are being changed. Into the very same image. As by the spirit of God. From glory unto glory. The mirror is the word. Is that not the mirror? It's the word. I, I, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. That you would. You would spend, you will not spend one more day satisfied outside Koinonia. Yeah. I pray in the name of Jesus, there's going to be a growing burden, a growing itch, a growing desperation, a growing hunger for God in your heart. Yeah. So that's why we're looking at the parables. Because if God can change the way you think, 
if God can replace belief systems, what a joyful life you would have. What a beautiful marriage you will experience. What a wholesome life you would live as a person. You'd be prosperous. You'll be peaceful. You will not be in the pursuit of nothingness. You will not be overtaken by the tyranny of comparison. What a good life you would really enjoy. No kidding. So that's what the parables would do to us. I'm going to go into just one today, uh, the shortest today, and it's because it sits nicely into into this uh, opening conversation. And by God's grace, next month, we will, it's going to be a buffet of the word. You are going to love it. It's going to be a buffet. There's a way we're going to do it next uh, month, but I won't give you the gist now. If you come next month, you'll love it. There's a way we're going to sit around the word that will be very, very empowering for you. But today, let's look at the parable of new clothes and new wineskins. In Matthew chapter 9, 16 to 17, you also have it in Mark 2, 21 to 22. You also have it in Luke 5, uh, 36 to 38. In Matthew 9, 16 to 17, it says, No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment, and the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine into old wine skins, or else the wine skins break, the wine is spilled, and new wine skins, and the wine skins are ruined. But they put new wine in new wine skins, and both are preserved. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And this scripture is a word for every single person, particularly in this season. I tell you what, as I prayed for each of you over the course of the week and prayed to, to, uh, this evening again, looking into the word and just, you know, leaning in into what, what was in the Father's heart, two things were very significant. The first was, I felt such a weight of God's glory. The kind that I, the way I'll describe it is whenever I, whenever I come into that kind of experience, preparing for a meeting, I get a sense of the Father's heart concerning the people. I don't know how to describe it to you. Like, you, I could tell that this meeting muttered a lot to God because he really wanted to reach each of us. And I prayed extensively for you that the word of God will be powerful in your case. That it will go into the deepest places of your heart and it will start to change things. I could sense the move of God reaching for hearts. The second thing I could sense very strongly was a great degree of urgency, particularly concerning some parables, this one being one of them. When we meet next month, I'm going to be showing you some of my favorite parables for you as a single person in a way that I've never seen them. But that was the second thing. I felt an urgency. I felt almost a warning. I felt that what I call a watchman anointing resting on me as though the Lord was saying, go tell my people. Like, go tell my people. This is not a joke. And what I, what, what I would love to say to you concerning this particular parable as the Lord opened my heart to it is, the new wine is here. The move of the Spirit is here because it, it, it is really about the move of the Spirit to enter into marriage. It's primarily about the move of the Spirit. It's not about who is prettiest. It's not about the church you attend. It's not about how old you are. It's not about who can connect you to, who can connect you to, who can connect you to a matchmaker. It's not about how often you go out and how sociable you are. We'll teach you all that. But I will fail you if I don't let you know that breaking into a marriage season, experiencing a marriage miracle is greatly supernatural. The people seated here who are married and who can bear witness that God by himself brought them into that season, 
quickened everything and saw what they could not see concerning their future and who they required to walk that journey with. Hallelujah. Is there any married person who can bear witness that way and say, I know, I know. Entering your marital season and stepping into a marriage miracle and being blessed with a gift of a daughter or son of God is a deeply spiritual thing. The Holy Spirit is the midwife of that process. And if he does it for you, your case is going to be the case of he who finds. Because that he who finds is not Moza, is Matza. It's not Moza as in discovery through search. It is Matza as in serendipity. An unplanned, surprising discovery when you were not looking. That is the root word of he who finds a wife, he who finds a spouse. It's not he who was gazing, searching, watching, dilly darling, mini money mowing. No. It's he who was in the presence of God, like Isaac, and lifted his eyes and saw her coming from afar. That's the type. It's not Moza, it is Matza. So why, why does this matter? Why did the Lord start to highlight this particular parable? What does he hold for you today? Your marriage is new wine. God has a greater desire for you to be married than you could have for yourself. Godly marriages advance kingdom agenda. It is the two who are better than one, who have a great reward for their labor. It is, it is the two who chase tens of thousands. It's the multiplier effect. A godly family is a platoon for the kingdom army. It's where destinies are forged, nations are built. It's where warfare is won on the knees because it is in marriage, if utilized wisely, that this principle of covenant agreement goes on to a whole different level. If two agree concerning a thing, it will be, do you understand that? God placed his covenant of accomplishment upon the agreement of mere mortals on the earth. If they will agree concerning a thing. So you getting married means a lot to God. It's good for his return on investment. It's great for the kingdom. He's not trying to withhold a good thing from you. And he's asked me to say to you that it's the seizing of the new wine. Some of you are listening to me right now and you don't even feel like this conversation is for you because you don't feel ready for marriage. You're like, I still want to go and do my master's abroad, make some good money before I start thinking. But as the move of God goes over this house and spreads across the body, because it's a body thing he said he's doing, even those listening online and those who listen at a different time, it's time for the new wine. There was a season we experienced a wave between year 2010 and 2013. A prophetic word was heralded and God brought it to pass about a quickening and a swift supernatural manifestation of miracle marriages and the will of God being done on the earth. It was huge. Women in their 50s and their 60s were getting married. 2018, he came again. He said, yet again, a season of supernatural marriages. Right? One of the things I thought I was going to be able to do today, which I will do at a different time, was uh, to read out to you testimonies from the book, I Am Married. Like, not far-fetched, not audio, right amongst us people who interacted 
with the teachings during that supernatural marriage course, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds who started to get married because of the word. So the Lord has said it's a new, it's, it's a season for the new wine again, where the Holy Spirit is breathing upon your life and establishing you, placing you within circles and communities filled with grace, connecting you for the one he's prepared for you, establishing approvals, opening doors where they have been shut and quickening the manifestation of the prophetic word. And all he says to me to say to you today is you can't put new wine in old wineskins. You can't put the anointing in, in godless expectations. Expectations you learned from movies and society. You can't place the anointing into the box of the pressure that you feel because you are the oldest and you are the only one unmarried. You can't place new wine into the wineskins of previous hurts, judging everyone by the first person you wear with or carrying on the fear that people from a certain tribe are a certain way or believing in the, in, in the uh, perspective that a strong woman doesn't submit or a calm man can't lead and provide for his family. These are belief systems that are firmly held in the hearts of saints. So he's saying we can't put new wine in old wine skin. I want you to rise this night and I want you to release your faith. As a married person, as a single person, I want to just encourage you to bring forth your words of commitment to God. That Father, as you help me in this season of a new wine, even for the married people, experience new wine in your marriage. Experience new bliss in your marriage. Experience.